As a teacher, she influences young minds, minds like mine. And she's also a poet who is known to be controversial. In 2016, she received the highest accolade for an artist below the age of 35 from the government, the Young Artist Award. The Singapore Writers Festival is the pinnacle event for writers and readers in the region. And she was appointed festival director for two years. Pooja Nancy, welcome to Inconvenient Questions. Hello, hi Maya. Great, so I want to get right down to the first question, Pooja. Yeah. So you have been a huge advocate for the importance of literary education. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that, you know, we're living in a society and an environment that whether we like it or not, does not prioritize arts, literature, and the likes, you know? I mean, these subjects have been called token. They've been labeled as soft options. I mean, mm -hmm. we can even look at the Straits Times article during the COVID period, which called artists non-essential workers. It's, it's really sad, but it's the reality that we're living in. And the growth industry right now is, is finance, is in business, is in, in the sciences, and that's where the funding is going. So I just want to ask you, you know, why, why are you advocating so strongly for a subject like literature, which mm. may just not make sense in today's climate? Uh, so there's a few, like, things that you brought up, which is, um, firstly, I could, like, give you a whole, there's, there's a whole conversation to be had about this, this non-essential article that came out. And I remember talking uh, to a lot of my artist friends and, uh, I don't think artists are essential right now. I really don't. I think healthcare workers are essential. You know, I mean, in the middle of a pandemic, like mm. art's important, it's uplifting, but it's not, it's not essential, let's put it that way. Um, but also, like, I guess if we're coming down to the question of why I think something like literature is uh, important or why I advocate for it, um, for me, like, at the core of, like, teaching lit or just being a reader or being a writer it's just at the core of it it's questioning what it means to be human it's about telling our stories and I think if we lose that then nothing else really quite matters you mm. know um, and also like if you hold the torch of quantifiability to something like literature it's never going to win it's like literature is not like a fight it's not it's not like finance you can't calculate you can't see the profit margin of someone who reads enough books. Like it comes out in very intangible ways. It makes you an empathetic person. It gives you a larger worldview. Um, it allows you to understand that the world is bigger than you, that people think differently from you. So those are really intangible, but super important things uh, that I can't sit and put into a pie chart or statistics. Mm -hmm. um, and as you rightfully said, we live in a society that uh, privileges quantifiability it privileges measurability it's uh it's a number driven profit driven society uh but that being said like if we don't want to lose who we are as human beings then then that's why i advocate for for something like lit so hard yeah. so would you say it's a it's a deeply fundamental issue in society that needs to change uh, I, I have a line from one of your older poems. Mm -hmm. I know it's been a while since you <laughs> looked at them, but I think it's, it's quite in line with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But if I could just quote you, you described the education system as comprising thoughtless words derived of models and standardized answers. And you described it to be a system which you believe holds back supposedly gifted students. So, I mean, that, that sounds very deeply personal. So do you, do you remember what, what made you write that? I mean, I, yeah, again, you're right. That poem's really old. But I think I was writing that collection, like, when I was teaching full-time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what, what struck me is that uh, Singaporean schools are very unforgiving of difference. And we're very, uh, we teach kids to be terrified of failure. And like that's that's quite deeply upsetting to me because actually like failure is a absolute necessity as an artist. Like you need to fail. Like failure is your best teacher. It's your best opportunity, right? Like unless unless you can reject something, there's no space to renew things. So so yes. So I guess for me, yes, it is deeply personal. It is it is like when I see kids who don't fit into the mold, but 
are super talented at other things and can't quite find their way or don't really have a path that uh, is offered to them because there's like one or two correct ways to succeed in our society. Um, yeah, then for me, like when I'm working with young people, it does become personal because I, I do think like we need to make space for all kinds of talent and all kinds of people. And I think in that, in doing that, like we build a stronger society. Hmm. So going back to, you know, how you have used your your poetry and your writing as a vehicle to speak about a lot of the issues you actually faced as a young yeah. person, as a woman, as a minority individual. Um, could you could you share some of that? You know, what what made you write such such personal issues in your poetry? From my interpretations of your poetry, you have clearly faced a lot of your own struggles. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to get it wrong. Like, I have a lot of privileges, right? Like, I've led a fairly comfortable life. My parents are, like, self-made people, but they have provided a very comfortable roof over my head my whole life. I've had access to education. So I have a lot of privileges to be thankful for. Um, but that being said... I mean, if your question is, why do I write about what I write about? It's because I, I, till today, I don't really, the first person I write for is myself. Like, right, I came to writing as a way of just making sense of the world around me. Like, I'm a very emotional person. It's messy. I have too many feelings. Um, so for me, like, it was a kind of coping mechanism or just a way to, like, put it out on paper so it was outside of myself. Um, so yeah, I, I, I started writing, uh, primarily for me and for like, to talk about the things that I felt I needed to talk about. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that's why my poetry is, is, is personal. It comes from a place of, of experience. Um, and sometimes like that experience can speak to larger social consciousness or, Mm -hmm. larger political issues but um really it's just about the things that i felt and seen around me so yeah. you know when when you actually write about such things how mm -hmm. how do you feel you know the act of of writing has actually helped you or liberated you from some of these struggles and you know when we look at society as a whole how do you mm -hmm. think literature as a medium adds mm -hmm. value to society like does does it have the potential to ignite actual change uh, literature in itself, no, but people who engage with it, yes. So um, for me, the act of writing is the act of articulating, is the act of, uh, is the act of reclaiming a narrative that I don't quite agree with, is the act of rewriting a narrative, is the act of telling my side of the story. That being said, like, it's not enough to just read or write. It's, it's about taking those ideas in and putting them into action in ways that create positive change, no matter what work you do. Like even if you're in the finance industry, it's about um, what is it in your daily work that you can contribute to in making a change. Yeah. Do you ever find yourself struggling because you you have this this great sense of purpose? I can see, and you know you you, de you definitely want to go out there and make a difference. But the line of work you're in and the type of work you engage in. I can imagine is quite frustrating, especially in a, in a society like Singapore, which as we discussed, does not prioritize the arts, does not prioritize literature, you know, and being a writer is a, is a difficult profession, especially being a poet. Mm. So, you know, could you share some of the struggles that you faced as a writer? I don't think I face struggles as a writer. Like for me, writing is a joy and writing is my safe space and writing is the thing that saves me or offers me a place. So, so I don't think being a writer is a, is a struggle. I think, um, I think the struggle comes when, like the act of writing and the act of publishing are two different things, you know? The act of writing and the act of performing or the act of writing and the act of arts organization, those are all very different acts. Like one is just a very personal conversation and the, other, the others then become collaborative. So, so I think we need to be specific about what aspect of the work uh, creates tension or what aspect of the work puts you uh, up front with things that don't 
necessarily want to see change or institutions that don't really want to see change. But um, for me, writing itself has never, has never been the struggle. Like I've never felt like, oh, because I'm a writer, I have a hard life, you know, because that's a, it's a choice and it's a privilege to, to, to be a writer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I, I want to, to segue back into mm. the, the kind of first point that we were talking about, you know, just about general priorities in society and what, what needs to change. So mm -hmm. first of all, would you, would you think you're coming from a slightly biased perspective, you know, your ad advocacy for literature, do you think mm -hmm. you're coming from a slightly biased perspective? Because, I mean, I, I read about your upbringing, you, you grew up in an arts environment, you grew up I did, yeah. by literature, which you know, most, not just Singaporeans, but most young people don't grow yeah. up in that kind of environment. Yeah. And many Singaporeans go through their lives without an in-depth, you know, education in literature and the arts. Mm -hmm. and they turn out just fine. So especially in a time like this, when we're facing, you know, an existential situation mm -hmm. because of COVID and the economic mm -hmm. crisis, the focus is increasingly going to be on jobs, on practical, mm -hmm. on practicality. So you know, do, do you fear that the arts and literature and the likes would, would slowly start to fade away? And is there, is there something that can be changed about that? I don't. Um, yes, I grew up in an arts family and I, I definitely had parents who were very, were artists in their own right. And so like I had a lot of access to, to literature and, and music and things like that. Um, and like while, I'm, while I was teaching, I've also encountered kids who are like, sec two and have never had their parents put a book in their hands, you know? So to them, reading is a, a sort of alien activity that doesn't, it's like, why? Why would I spend an hour with a book? Um, and I just feel like reading and writing are fundamental rights that everybody should have because the act of reading, like I said before, it, it's your window to the world. And the act of writing, not necessarily the act of publishing, but the act of writing is something that we should all be familiar with. And I actually, I think young people today are doing more writing than they realize. Like, it, like your generation is such a text-driven and image-driven generation. Like you're constantly on Twitter, you're constantly on Instagram, you're constantly engaging with like ideas and text in a way that my generation didn't. It's just that the way we engage with it has changed, you know? So I actually think like young people nowadays are much more literate than, than, uh, than a generation ago, you know, and have so much more access to ideas of social change and social progress um, because of the internet and social media than my generation did. So I'm not, I'm not concerned that people, that it's going to become irrelevant. I actually think like, I, I think young people are where it's at. I think if anyone's going to make a difference, it's going to be this generation. Like um, just recently when the whole like Black Lives Movement thing, um, erupt, the movement erupted, you know, like I was seeing young people share quotes from like James Baldwin. Um, and I was thinking like, I didn't even know who James Baldwin was when I was like 16. So the fact that you shared a quote, you may not have read his work, but it might uh, galvanize you too it might galvanize you to reach out to it. So, so I think the world is evolving in the way that we, we engage with literature. Okay, I'm sorry, Pooja, we're running out of time, but I'd like to just ask you one last question. Yeah. I think what we're talking about is really an actable change. Mm -hmm. And that can only happen, you know, if we're talking about the education system, that can only happen yeah. through policy changes. Mm -hmm. So let's do a little role play. Just imagine okay. I'm a policymaker. I know Great. that's not me, but just <laughs> A policymaker and yeah. if you could just spend three minutes to mm -hmm. give me a pitch as to why it is so important to have an arts and literature education in Singapore. Oh wow uh, I did not come prepared for this three minute pitch Maya but um, yeah I, I, I mean I fundamentally think that we want to create a generation that's um, thinking and more, more importantly you want empathetic thinkers you don't just want uh, quantifiable things, you know, like, yes, it's important to have people who understand statistics and hard skills like economics and math. Um, but you also want people who use those skills for the betterment of society. Like you don't want kind of sociopath uh, financiers or like, or, you know, you just don't want sociopath scientists out there. So like underlying 
the people who make big change, uh, whether they go into science or engineering or, or any of those hard skills, right, is, is who they are as people and uh, what they understand of, of people who are different from them, what they understand of people who are less fortunate with them, what they understand of what they can bring to the world. And I genuinely think like the only, the only thing that can offer you that kind of insight is an arts education, you know, is, is, is reading history or reading literature uh, and engaging with what it means to be a human being across time and space. So yeah, I think that needs to be at the basis of any kind of work that you do. Yeah, that's, and so you should definitely make pure lit compulsory all around. And that's my pitch. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pooja. Yeah. That was extremely insightful. And I'm so glad to have had you on Inconvenient Questions today. Thank uh, you. Thank you for having me.